Before becoming a Christian, there was something that I learned that had a huge impact on my life. Everywhere I've gone in the world and performing in several countries on five continents, I have discovered that people are desperately searching for meaning and purpose to life. When I was touring with Andre Cole, he had told me of a story of the time he was in Europe and had heard about a man in London who went into the office of a psychiatrist. This man told the psychiatrist that if he couldn't do something to make him happy, that when he leaves the office, he will commit suicide. The psychiatrist talked to this man for many hours and didn't get anywhere with him when all of a sudden, the psychiatrist had an idea. He remembered that the day before, he had taken his uh, little boy to the other side of London to see a circus. In this circus, they saw the funniest clown that they've ever seen, and they laughed all the way through the entire circus. That clown was the hit of the show. So the psychiatrist got the idea that since nothing else had worked, that maybe he can get that man to see that clown, and surely that clown would do something to make him happy. He invited that man to go with him to see that clown. And the man said, I'm sorry, but I can't go with you, for you see, I am that clown. A few days later, that clown committed suicide. I find that this is the picture of the lives of millions of people in the world today. Laughing on the outside, but they're desperately crying on the inside. The awfulness of loneliness and emptiness. This was the picture of my life 30 plus years until I discovered what I'm going to share with you tonight. This simple illustration that I will share with you has helped millions of people throughout the world to begin the understanding of the answers to life. Some of the most important questions in life. Why am I here? Where am I going? Is there any real meaning and purpose to life? In this illustration, this orange ball will be used to represent each one of us here tonight. Every man, woman, and child. This yellow ball will be used to represent God. Not just a God, but the one true living God. The God who created us, who loves us, and who has, a, who has an exciting plan and purpose for each one of our lives. I learned originally that man was created by God to have a relationship with him and to have a fellowship with him. But when man chose to go his own independent way from God, that fellowship was broken. I learned that this is what the Bible means by the word sin, that sin is basically our choice. It's by word or action. God, you go your way. I'll go my own way. I don't need you, God. I can do my own thing. This is what mankind chose to do, and the results were disastrous. So by this illustration, this orange ball will represents the life of each one of us. This blue ball will represent the evil in our lives, which the Bible calls sin. And this yellow ball will represent God. So we could see from this illustration how sin has separated a holy God from sinful man. And if man is ever going to come back into contact with God and have a relationship with him, somehow this barrier of sin has to be removed. Now, there are many religions in the world today, and I have found that there is much good in most religions. I have ran into people who think that just by being good that you could have a relationship with God. Some people think that just by being religious enough, you could have a relationship with God. But you see, that is the problem with religion. Religion is what a sinful man tries to do for a holy God. Tonight, I am talking about something far more important than religion. Religion is what a sinful man tries to do for a holy God. But much more important is what a holy God did for sinful man. And what he did could be illustrated by two good friends who went through law school. 
After they graduated, one went on to become a very prominent attorney and later a judge. The other got involved in a number of illegal activities and later this person was arrested and eventually he was brought before his one-time friend, the judge. Naturally, everybody wondered what this judge was going to do with his one-time best friend. They were all surprised when this judge passed the heaviest fine, the heaviest penalty that the law would allow on his best friend. But then that judge stepped down from his bench, took, took off his judge's robe, took out his checkbook, and paid the fine himself and allowed his friend to go free. Basically, I learned that that is what God did for us. God's love would have gladly forgiven us when we sinned against him, but because of his holiness and his righteousness, he could not allow it. So like that judge, God passed upon man the heaviest penalty possible, the penalty of death. But in his love 2,000 years ago, God stepped down out of eternity into time and became the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Colossians 1.15 that Jesus was the visible expression of the invisible God. Jesus was God in the form of man, and he performed miracles to prove the fact that he was God. Miracles that only God can do. I'm a magician. I do not pretend to know much about theology or religion, and I'm not a preacher. But there is a subject that I know a great deal about, and that is a subject of magic. And as a magician, I know that no magician or any other person who has ever lived can perform the genuine miracles that Jesus did of instantly healing every known disease, raising the dead, feeding a multitude of 5,000 out of a small lunch, and we can go on and on. Jesus said, if you have a difficult time believing my words, then believe because of the mighty miracles that you see me do. Several years ago in a worldwide television program, illusionist David Copperfield made this statement. The miracles of the Bible go beyond anything that any magician or illusionist could ever perform, but greater than any physical miracle was the ability of a man named Jesus to bring purpose and meaning to the lives of millions of people throughout the centuries. For 33 years, Jesus walked upon the face of this earth, and at the end of that time, he allowed the people that he created to spit upon him, to beat him, and then to nail him to a cross of wood. As someone put it, he came to die on a cross of wood, yet he made the hill on which it stood. But it did not end there. Following his crucifixion, he was taken down from the cross and prepared for burial. But in three days, something happened that changed the entire course of history. On the third day, God supernaturally, supernaturally raised Jesus Christ from the dead as eternal approval of what Jesus did for us on the cross but die, by dying in our place to pay the penalty for our sins. If we were honest with ourselves here today, I believe that every person here today would have to agree with the, with the statement made by the well-known American author, Mark Twain, when he said that each one of us is like the moon. We each have a dark side and an evil side that we wish that no one else would know anything about. Some of the symptoms of that dark side are such things as hatred, jealousy, anger, lust, pride, greed, addiction to drugs or alcohol, gambling, and many other things. If we were honest, every one of us here today would know that not one of us ever lives a good enough life or a good enough religious life that they could we could ever deserve coming into the presence of an absolute holy and righteous God. But the greatest thing that God wants each of us to know, and that is in spite of our sins, that he still loves each one of us, that 2,000 years ago, he, Jesus came to die in our place for our sins. And in doing so, Jesus Christ, by his death on the cross, removed the barrier of those sins. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
if Jesus was God, and he was, and Jesus said that he was the only way to God, then he is the only way to God to have this relationship. What Jesus did for us on the cross could be illustrated by, by a man by the name of John Griffith. John worked on a railroad, and his job was to raise and lower the bridge so he could let the ships pass and the trains to cross. One day, John decided to take his eight-year-old boy to work with him. And as they were eating lunch, John could hear a whistle of the train coming, and John realized that he had left the bridge up to let the ships pass. And so he rushed to the control tower to lower the bridge. And as he began to start to lower the bridge, he heard a horrible scream behind him. John realized that his son had fallen into the gears of that great bridge. John had to make a decision and he could, he could raise the bridge and jump in and save his son, but hundreds of people would die on this train. Or he could lower the bridge, sacrificing his son so everyone on the train could live. John made that decision. And as he lowered the bridge, he had to hear the screams of his eight-year-old son as he was being crushed among the gears of that great bridge. The train passed safely across, and people waved merrily at John as they were passing by, unaware of the sacrifice that John had just made so that all of those people could live. And John banged on a control tower, doesn't anybody care that I just sacrificed my son so that they, they could live? Today, God is saying the same thing to each one of us. 2,000 years ago, God had to listen to the death of his only son on a cross when he could have stopped the whole thing at any moment. But the Bible says in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And yet today, so many of us, we just go through life merely on our way, just waving at God as we go through ignoring the sacrifice that he made for each one of us. But the very moment that a person realizes that their life is separated from God because of sin and that it is only through Jesus Christ, not religion, but only through the person of Jesus Christ, that the barrier of sin can be removed and at that act of their will, when that person says that I receive you, Jesus, forgive me of my sins, come into my life and make my life complete. At that very moment, Jesus brings man and God together in relationship. Jesus is the only way that we can have a relationship with a dynamic personal God. Right now, I'd like to pray a simple prayer with you similar to the one that I prayed when I first accepted Jesus into my life. And if this prayer makes any sense to you, then make my prayer your prayer. Remember, it's not the words that we say, but it's the attitude of the heart. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying in my place for my sins. Forgive me in my sins and come into my life and make my life complete. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, I pray. Amen. Remember, as I said earlier, it's not the words we say that matter to God. God's not into elaborate words, but rather it's the attitude of our heart. God is only concerned with our heart. That's what he's concerned about. Sometimes we don't know what to pray and that's okay because we could be silent because God knows what's going on inside our hearts. He knows, he knows what we need before we even ask for it. And sometimes if you're just want to sit down and talk to God and you don't need to get elaborate with your prayers or your words, you just talk to God, just like I'm talking to you right now, just like a friend would talk to a friend. That's how we talk to God. You may uh, have been sitting there watching this show with Magic Alive 2020, and you've listened to this message, and you've prayed that prayer, 
and you pr- you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life for the very first time, and you say, Scott, tonight is the night I accepted Jesus Christ. Okay, I want to get something into your hands. Momentarily, my email will flash across the screen. I want you to email me and say, Scott, tonight I've accepted Jesus Christ into my life. I want to send you something that will help you understand a little bit better of your new Christian walk and where to get started. You may be asking yourself, well, what do I do? Where do I go from here? And uh, the first thing that you need to do is to get involved with a Bible reading church and be around people, be around other believers who believe in God and have God in their life. Um, and that's what you, that's who you want to get involved with. Okay. And, uh, they'll connect you with a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, uh, and you don't know where to look in a Bible and, uh, the, what I, what I suggest is if you pick up a Bible, the first books that you, uh, should read that I would suggest reading are the book of Mark and the book of John. Those are the two books that will help you understand a little bit more about your new Christian life. Okay. Now, you may be that person that is completely walked away from God, that you've turned your back on God, because sometimes we've done that before. We've completely turned our back on God and went our own separate way from God, and you want to rededicate your life back to Jesus Christ. And you've done that tonight, and you prayed that, said, God, come into my life, and I want to make my life complete again with you. If that's you tonight, I want to also get something in your hands. Please email me and I'll send you something that will help you a little bit better understand it. It's okay. You know, God is forgiving. God is loving. He He's gracious uh, and he's merciful. And so uh, he'll always forgive you no matter how many times we walk away from him. Um, but uh, he, he will always forgive us. So I want to help get something in your hands. I want to thank you, all of you, Uh, for watching Magic Live 2020. In just a moment, I am going to close out with a final illusion, something that is just going to totally blow your mind. And uh, I want you to stick around and I want you to watch as we close out the show with that final illusion. And uh, I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for watching Magic Live 2020. I love you guys. All the magicians love you guys. Uh, They've put in their time and their effort Uh, to bring you a good show and uh, we want to hear your comments we want to hear your feedback so stick around and chat with the magicians afterwards on this uh, YouTube live chat here and uh, we just want to hear from you so thank you so much you guys have a great rest of the night and God bless each and every single one of you to get more information on becoming a Christian or to get information about adult and teen challenge contact Scott Wolf at this email address 